What's up, people? This is Dama Dozen, and you're rocking with the Five New York. How you doing today? I'm great, man. How are you? All right. Take, so take us back to age 11. What motivates you to write your first song? What was the title? Hmm. Well, my first song, 11 years old, was it, it was called Detention. And um, it's weird because I never really went to detention in school. I, I didn't really have a detention set up in elementary school or, uh, what, yeah, it was elementary. Yeah, like, I didn't really have a, a detention set up. I just would see it on TV. So I just felt like, you know, I never experienced it, but I knew what it was, so I just wanted to write a song about it. So it was like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna relate to all the kids out there that, that are in detention right now and <laughs> help them through it. And yeah, that was age 11. My first song was called Detention. And it was like a play on the R. Kelly song, Fiesta. So it was like, Detention, Detention. Oh, man. <laughs> Very embarrassing, but yeah, that was my first song. <laughs> All right, so, okay, now fast forward eight years and tell us, how did you get signed to Warner, Brother, Warner, uh, Warner Brothers Records? An example, was there a meeting? Did someone pass a mixtape to someone internally, etc.? Well, the whole Warner situation came about when I was working with Plain Pat on one of my mixtapes. It's called 20 Equal X. We dropped that back in 2011. We were mastering it, but we were just mixing it down in the studio, uh, just, you know, the last session before it was done. And Dante Ross, who was uh, managing uh, Action Bronson at the time, it was him, Action Bronson and Dante. Dante worked at Warner, and he, he walked in the studio with Bronson. And Pat, Plain Pat played on one of my records, and. You know, a few weeks after, you know, he called me in the office and was like, you know, what's good? Like, you know, you want to sign this deal? Like, I really enjoy your music. And, you know, he showed me a lot of love and still, you know, signed a deal and the rest. It's been history, you know, we're making history now. That's what's up. Uh, so tell us about your first big performance. Where did it take place? Were you nervous and did you get paid? <laughs> My first big performance, I got to think about that because I got to think about what I consider a big performance. A big performance for me would actually be like, uh, aside from all these, you know, you know, I've, I've done the world tour, I did uh, the overseas joints, I've done, you know, tours around America with my band, but the biggest show to me and what meant the most to me was probably my, my talent show back in junior high, eighth grade. And that was big because it was, you know, it was my peers. It was my like first, like real solo rap performance. I remember I had on a, uh, what was it, a striped polo, <laughs> and I had a little jam sport book bag, and yeah, I was just rocking. And my 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 peers showed me a lot of love. You know, I wasn't really that accepted in school. I was kind of an outcast. So to get on the stage and really feel that love from my peers and see that they enjoyed my music was a great thing and that was that was eighth grade and I didn't get paid <laughs> and um, yeah that was probably you know my most memorable and uh, my biggest performance in my mind. Okay that's what's up. So how did you and Puma link up? Well Puma uh, showed interest. Um, we had been you know in talks for a little while and I finally you know signed up for Sneaker Deal and it's been dope. Um, yeah, we we. Uh, what, what was it? It was a, a friend of a. It, one of my friends at the Fader. One of my friends at Cornerstone Fader. Um, he he put Puma on to who I was, and they checked me out, and they explained to me that it's real strategic. Like they, their their approach on uh, choosing artists to represent them is just real. You know, picky. They don't like in, you know just to pick anybody. So to be an artist that they, they show interest in is it's really cool. Uh, I respect them and like, you know, this is like the beginning of our, of our relationship. I'm doing the, the fall campaign, uh, the lifestyle fall campaign for the for the brand and you know I'm excited you know, for what's to come. That's a beautiful thing. Um will we see a signature line bearing your name? Um <laughs> Hey we'll see, you know, we're just working, we're just moving forward and just, you know, building a, a relationship and just, you know, we'll see where it takes us from there. Okay, that's what's up. <laughs> what's your favorite Puma shoe of all time and why? Um, I'm really into the classics. I'm really into the classics, but 
I like the McQueens a lot. The McQueen collaboration it was a, probably my favorite. I'm not wearing it now. But uh, the McQueens are definitely my favorite. I got the white McQueens. I got the the red uh, the red blue McQueens. I just love that that style. It's just real classy. It's real swing. I, I dig it. And now that you, Rocky Fresh, Casey Veggies, and Cash Out are a part of the Puma family, is there a chance you may see one or all pairing on each other's tracks? I mean, me and Rocky, we're on, you know, the same label. I've met uh, Casey Veggies a few times, never met um, Cash Out, though. But I respect their music, so hopefully. And who did you look up to growing up? Um... I still look up to Eminem. I still look up to Jay Z. I still look up to Fifty Cent, Busta Rhymes. Um, uh, regular people that are not celebrities like my stepdad. My mom I look up to her. Mm. Yeah, those are probably like the biggest influences and the biggest, you know, the people I looked up to the most. Okay, and who would you like to work with? You know, the, the, the Kanye's, that's another person I look up to, just respect his music and his, his craft and all the, you know, the things he's done, he's done to uh, take hip hop to another level. And I feel like I want to do that too. And if I was to be able to, you know, do that you know, with him, that would be crazy. So the Kanye's, the Eminem's, the... Who's out now that I really like? I like Chance the Rapper a lot. It's this guy coming out from Chicago. He's real good. He has a real solid project coming out right. That's out right now. He's good. I'm gonna do something with him. But yeah, I'm. I'm I always got my ear to the streets. I'm listening for new artists. And if you had to become a rapper, what would you be doing? Probably art. Probably drawing or painting. I used to be really into that. I, I went to a, a art school. Uh, in high school, Edward R. Morrow, 4R, but I've been doing music this whole, you know, since I was 11, so it's really taken over more than art. Art was like a side thing, so if I didn't do that, I would either be directing or I would be, you know, you know if I wasn't doing music, I would either be directing or doing art. Okay. What's your favorite album of all time? Damn! All time? Damn, I just, I like so many genres of music, so if, if you want to say hip-hop album, uh, hmm, maybe Marshall Mathers LP, maybe, maybe, and then you got, because there's it's so many classics in hip-hop, you got Illmatic, you got Reasonable Doubt, and that's just off top what people think of, but if you want to talk about music, I would have to say something like Songs of the Key of Life by Stevie Wonder. Or, um, you know, the I Want You album. Like, man, there's just so much music. But if you want to say hip hop, uh, Eminem's, uh, Marshmallow's LP, uh, if you want to talk about music in general, I'll have to say something from Stevie or Marvin Gaye. Or, damn, there's just so much music. I love it all, man. It's hard. <laughs> all right. Um, is there ever a time you feel discouraged? If so, how do you overcome that? Um, yeah, growing up in the, the music industry and learning a lot as you go and just being, learning life lessons as an adult and at the same time learning life left, uh, industry lessons within the industry and just dealing with people, you know, you do get discouraged, but I just always just you know, think of it like, you know, this is a lesson I need to learn and if I didn't learn it, you know, I will be worse off. So I take these, I look at my lessons and my discouragement from you know learning these lessons of taking these L's as like knowledge and motivation and blessings. These are blessings. My lessons are blessings, you know. And uh, I can get discouraged at times, but at the end of the day, I know that everything's going to be good. Okay, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. So we touched on Stevie Wonder and Marvin Gaye. Well, what other genres of music do you listen to besides hip hop? Mm. Listen to a little bit of jazz. Um, I'm really into Amy Winehouse. 
and it's a current Bailey Ray, so that would be on the acoustic, more chill vibe of music. I don't even know what you would call that. I just listen to it because it sounds good. I don't try to categorize it. Um, I don't listen, I don't listen to a little bit of rock. You know, it's sporadic, but my main my main genres are hip hop and R and B and soul music. Anything else is just really sprinkled in. And I don't try to categorize them, I just sprinkle them into my hip hop because they all inspire me the same. Okay, so what's up? So I know we touched on Eminem and a few others, but um the track Swing Sinatra definitely has that early nineties New York hip hop vibe. What artists influence your music? Mm, the early hip well yeah, Swing Sinatra <clears throat> Yeah, I can see why people would say that's like, you know, a throwback track. Doing it, creating that, we never like intended it to be that way. But definitely our our influences come from, you know, the nineties because that's you know the era we grew up in. So I would say Wu Tang, uh, M, uh, J, Nas, for sure. Nas. Nas is a beast, underrated. But um yeah, you know, the guys we grew up on, the New York artists we grew up on, and the East Coast, and the lyricists that we grew up on really inspire us. So, Wu Tang, M, J, uh, Nas, Kane, Mostaf, Kwali. Okay, so so guys. I like that. So, speaking of New York hip hop in the early 90s, not since that time period has New York dominated the radio airwaves. After about 2000, the sound of the South pretty much took over, and since then it seems that a lot of New York artists could easily be mistaken for Southerners. <laughs> no hate to the South, of course, but once upon a time there was, there was diversity on the radio. Mm. As a New York artist, do you find it harder to A, get signed by a major, B, get radio airplay for a song that doesn't sound like a strip club anthem? Mm. Well, speaking for myself, I got a deal young. So, you know, I don't really know the struggles of a guy that is trying to get a deal right now, but, hmm, huh. I feel like the times of that strip club record uh, having to be on the radio, and you having to make a strip club record to be on the radio are kind of fading, because the music, you, see, you say that the 90s, these guys, you know, somebody like me or Joey, Let's bring it back like that 90s feel and that the hip hop, you know, the essence of hip hop, that 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 throwback, boom bap sound. And these guys, like like Joey on me, we're 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 really gonna come up in Brooklyn. I feel like we have the opportunity to take the nineties music that was that wasn't really mainstream, uh, was just, you know, kept by the hood and make it like more mainstream than ever, like that 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 golden era sound, that vintage sound, and bring it to the forefront. And I feel like if we keep doing what we we're doing and inspiring enough people, we can get that sound back. And um, yeah, I, I'm I'm not really concerned about now. I'm a, I'm concerned about what we're doing in the future. You know. Okay. Some of the greatest artists of all time came out in the 90s. Jay-Z, Big, Nas, Pun, Eminem, DMX, Big L, Wu-Tang, etc. DMX! <laughs> Damn, I keep forgetting him. I can't forget him. <laughs> and if you check out any of the comments on YouTube for a lot of the older hip-hop tracks, you usually stumble upon the same two top comments. They don't make them like this anymore, and my generation music sucks. I wish I grew up in this era. In your opinion, why do you think a lot of people feel that way and tend to gravitate towards the 90s so much? Not only for the music, but also for the fashion, sneakers, video games, etc. Um, from the 90s, things have definitely changed. I feel like people that didn't grow up in the 90s or younger kids that didn't really, weren't really old enough. Because I know I wasn't really old enough to fully experience, you know, the, you know, the release of, uh, you know, a reasonable doubt or the Illmatic or to like be in this time, the time periods when these joints came out and they were active and bumping in everybody's cars. So I can see why, you know, a younger generation would look back and be like, yo, 
like, yo, I wish music was like this right now. Because there definitely was a change, and it's not, our, it's not completely our fault that the music changed like that. So it's like, we like what we like, but it's, that, it's, it's for sure not what the radio has given us. So we, 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 we're, we're fascinated with the 90s because we want it back because we want to live as adults and, you know, have this era be the same as it was back then. So I think it's, I think it's, yeah, I think that feeling is coming back too. So. Okay, so stop. What do you do when you're not performing? Right. Uh, uh, I like to experience. Uh, I say writing. Because writing is 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 there's a lot of things to it. It's like I need the experience. I need to actually go out there and like see things and experience things to gather knowledge to write. So that's a part of writing for me too. Because I don't go. I don't go to school. I'm not in school anymore. So you know the tours, just living life in general, going out meeting new people and having conversations with people and seeing what is important to them. I do a lot of that and just in order to incorporate that into my music. So that's what I really do when I'm not, you know, rapping per se. I'm living life in order to add it to what I'm doing. Because this is what I love. This is what I, I'm going to do. You know? Okay, that's what's up. The internet is a gift and a curse in many ways. You could become famous overnight and fall off just as fast. In your opinion, how do you maintain the attention of listeners that have ADD when it comes to supporting artists? Um, that's another thing, man. <laughs> that's another thing, because it's like, people want, it, want the generation to be like it was. And like, they, a lot of kids, a lot of 90s kids feel like they missed out on a generation and an era that was just dope. But dudes ain't got the attention to, to live in an era like that. Uh, try to live, uh, emulate what was you know back then, because attention spans are just like that. You gotta think about how long it took people to put out albums sometimes. People drop like an album a year or an album every two years. Nas dropped Illmatic 94, 96. He came out with, uh, it was written. It's like, that's a two hour, that's two, that's two years. And people are still loving that first album like it was a classic, because it is a classic. So people want music so much nowadays. We, the, the, like, the fans are spoiled. The fans are spoiled. Like, I really am on my 90s shit. Like, I take time <laughs> to finish music. So if people, you know, I, the best way probably to just keep people occupied and just to keep people interested is to, you know, just take you know, singles on to the people because that project that album it's, it's got to be crazy I'm not going you know just don't crap out you know so the, a way to keep people's attention and you no know, fans attention with their ADD is just you know drop some singles but as far as you know, huge projects you know I, I'm, I'm a believer of taking your time and making it right that's a beautiful thing all right, so are there any projects you have lined up for the second half of 2013? Like, what do you have you know, in store for the next second half of the year? You know, like I said, uh, just probably keep dropping singles out. Uh, this last mixtape, of course, a Donovan that dropped in April. I'm right. That dropped in January. It's April now. Um, it dropped in January. I'm, I'm going to be dropping a lot of videos for that. I dropped a few, probably four videos for it already. Just going to... Uh, Drop a few more over the summer. We aim at release a new project this fall. So, but other than that, you know, the the singles, the videos, looking to do an album in 2014. I'm just working. That's a beautiful thing. All right. So we're asking all the Puma ambassadors this question. Puma has a deep roots. Puma has some deep roots in the breakdancing culture, and in 1984 sponsored the movie B Street, mm -hmm. which featured the New York City Breakers. Can you break this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I can't break this, bro. I can hardly regular dance. <laughs> nah, yeah, I, I, I'm, my, uh, 
one of my one of my mentors one of my mentors was actually in um B Street. DJ Jazz, DJ Jazzy J, he's uh my drummer's from my band's his father. He's actually his father, so I can I can ask him for some tips, but I can't break that. <laughs> Alright. Puma has a lot of heat in their vault that hasn't re-released, so we decided to bring three that we liked and ask you which one you would like to see in return. See return. Oh, these are throwbacks? Or they, they haven't come out yet? Uh, they, uh, they were released years, years, years ago. I like that. I'm a big fan of black and gold. So these joints right here are appealing. And they're kind of sporty, but. Sporty, but at the same time, you can't you know, throw them on with whatever you want, really. It's a big time. I like them. Back and go with these should come back. She called them the swanks. She called them the Dom sneakers. Let's put my name on. Bring them back, baby. The Ed Damas. Ow! Yeah, these are crazy. I, I would really like to see these come back. Okay, that's what's up. You know, see that? He's sending out. For real. Nah. Appreciate that. Sure. All right. Um. So, where can everyone go to stay on top of the latest happenings between you and Puma? Well, I'll be updating my my website all the time. That's I am Dime dot com. That's I am D Y M E dot com. I am D Y M E. That's I am Dime. And uh, yeah, I'll be updating that. You check out the Puma website, of course, and see what's up on their website every day. You know. Puma.com and yeah, follow me on Twitter. Dime a dozen at Dime a dozen. Yeah, and you can find that all on IamDime.com. So that's the site. That's the go-to site. Uh, do you have an Instagram as well? You want to plug? Yeah, same thing. Dime a dozen, but you can find all of that on IamDime.com. That's like the easiest way because my name is not, it's it's Dime a dozen, but it's it's it's, it's spelled funky. So. So you can get the exact way to spell it. Just go I am Don, make it easy for yourself. Find everything on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. Everything. All right. I appreciate it, Don, for you taking the time out your day to sit down with us. Thank you, man. Um, definitely a pleasure. For sure, for sure, man.